Well, uh, blessed people, I come to you today, uh, this morning at 3.07 a.m. East African time, uh, because the Lord has spoken with me here. There was a meeting that took place here of the National Council of Bishops, and they left. And uh, as they left, when I finished the last group, I walked in, and then in a moment fell asleep. And that flash of falling asleep, immediately the Lord Jehovah, he showed me the rapture of the church. Again, today, after this night, the council of bishops meeting, sharing quite a bit with them, and then walked in. And immediately I began to fall asleep like this. The Lord showed me like lightning going across the sky, going <laughs> like lightning. Do you know when you charge your phone, you normally see that sign of the battery charging, that zigzag line that shows lightning or electricity, whichever the sign stands for. But that sign that goes left, right, left, right, the one of lightning, the sign of electricity. Again, this night. Today, after meeting the National Council of Bishops and sharing with them at great length and very deep things about this mission of the Lord on the earth. And then uh, when I walked in and fell asleep, the moment at which I was falling asleep like this, then I saw like lightning that went from the earth across the sky <laughs> like this. Went across the entire sky all the way up. Then the voice of the Lord said, the rapture of the church. Then immediately I jumped out, I jumped up, and uh, came to you, told them to prepare the radio for you. Again, let me repeat this. Today, after a very long session, a very long time with the National Council of Bishops here, and shared very deep on this mission of the Lord with them, and uh, spoke to them also on the possibility of uh, the Lord moving the mission and also how it was a greater longing to have these missions be launched from here to preserve the revival. Then after the bishops left, and the last batch that was the senior archbishop and the deputies left, when I walked in, then immediately I began to fall asleep like this. Then the Lord showed me like lightning coming from the earth, going all the way up into the heaven. It will turn over the sky like that. And then the voice of the Lord said, the rapture of the church. Then I jumped up. And that is why I come to you this morning, late in the night and also very early in the morning, without waiting. This is a very, very powerful time, blessed people. First of all, it shocked me quite a bit. Because I realized that, oh, this cannot wait. Again, the Lord has spoken with me about the rapture of the church. And then by voice, he said, the rapture of the church. But he showed me like lightning coming from the earth, going up through the cloud, through the sky, and into the clouds and beyond. I have seen the rapture of the church. Now, the Bible says very clearly here, that nobody knows the day or the hour when this event will take place. However, I have always known very well that the Lord will always make me know. These two prophets, the messengers that have come prepared the way, they will always know in advance when it's near, without knowing the day or hour, but the Lord would always speak to them. Like he has spoken several, for many years now, about the rapture of the church, the taking of the church, the gathering of the Holy Saints. The Lord has spoken continuously. And I know because of this mission, you will always make me know even when the proximity is closer. Now the Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 all the way to 17, it says, according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 16, he says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven 
with a loud command and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, it says, After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. So this is the scripture that describes the dynamic of the rapture, the mechanistic, the process, the procedure, how it will take place on that day. And it's a very powerful scripture because it lays out very clearly what happens to those who are asleep and those that will be resurrected and then glorified in the process, and those who are awake that will actually be translated. So those who are asleep and will be resurrected and transformed, while those who are awake and uh, holy that will be translated. And he says those who are asleep first, and then after that, those who are awake. Then another scripture that describes the rapture of the church is the book of First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 56, it says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. And then it says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Verse 52, he says, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. Again, 52, I repeat, in a flash. So you see what the Lord has just shown me this night. Like that over the sky, in a flash. And it was zigzag. It went zigzag like lightning. You always see when you're charging your phone, that lightning sign. So it went up. Everything went up in a flash like lightning, like that. Then the Lord said, the rapture of the church. That's when I jumped up and called the radio station and told them to wake you people up, that you may hear what the throne of God, what Jehovah Yahweh has spoken from his throne. And because nobody knows the day or the hour, uh, I thought it's very important to come to you now that everybody be informed. If it does happen today, so you will be aware. If it does happen tomorrow, you'll be aware. Ten years from now, you'll be aware. Two days from now, you'll be aware. 36 hours, but the instruction is that this has been spoken by the Lord. Again, it says, I declare to you, brothers, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 56, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the glorious kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Then he says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Verse 52 is very key. He says, in a flash, what the Lord showed me this night is a flash, like that, like lightning, at once. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. Verse 54. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Verse 55. Where all death is your victory? Where all death is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So again, now, here is described in the same event, more accurately now, what he has shown me tonight. Again, because it went up like lightning, like that, like lightning from the ground, across the sky, deep across past the clouds, and beyond. You went, and then he said, the rapture of the church. And then I jumped up, immediately I jumped up. And he says, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, it will take place. Another scripture that talks about the rapture of the church is this one. In the book of Revelation chapter 19, Revelation 19 is almost similar to 
1 Corinthians 15 that I just read. I'll explain to you why. In Revelation 19, verses 6 to 9, it says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reign. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Verse 8, he says, Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then he says, Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. So you see, Revelation 19, verse 8, is what connects Revelation 19, the narrative of the rapture, to 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 56. Why? Because here he mentions the standard, the benchmark for entry. He says, Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. And he says, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. He says, those that will wear fine linen are the ones that enter. In other words, wear righteousness. And yet in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 56, he also raises the standard there. And he says, the perishable flesh and the perishable blood that you wear today will not inherit the glorious eternal kingdom of God, the imperishable, immortal kingdom of God. And then at that point, he brings it to you in just that verse alone. He brings it to you that everything perishable, everything flesh, will not enter. In other words, only the imperishability of your salvation will bring you to the glorious kingdom of God. In other words, he's saying that only righteousness will earn you a place in the holy kingdom of God. Why? Because he's saying only righteousness increases the shelf life, the lifespan, the longevity of the Christian, of the church. That when you wear righteousness, then you can live forever. So that's the similarity between these two. And then for Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to 9, he goes on saying, verse 9, Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited into the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he said, These are the true words of the Lord. Then another scripture that is similar to 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 56, and Revelation 19, 6 to 9, is Revelation 16, verse 15. It says, Look, I come like a thief, and blessed is one who stays awake and remains clothed, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Again, he exalts the garment of righteousness. The garment of righteousness that one needs that they may be able to enter the glorious eternal kingdom of God. And then as a question now, so you see he has raised righteousness and he's exalting righteousness and he's exhorting you, the Christian, that given the kind of critical conversation the Lord has had with me, remember nobody knows the day or the hour when the rapture takes place. However, the season we can see, the season we know, and however... These messengers that prepare the way, we know very clearly that the Lord would somehow engage them in a conversation as he has done before across the years about the rapture when it's near. And then when it's really proximate, at one point he would signal them. And so the Lord is saying that this is the hour for righteousness in the life of the Christian believers. And for those who are not born again, this is the hour to receive the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, And be born again, be baptized in complete immersion of water, and that you may die and be buried with him in baptism and resurrect with him in eternal life, and then be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So, again, this night, the Lord has had a tremendous conversation with his two most dreadful prophets. This is the conversation as I finish. After meeting the bishops the whole day here, the National Council of Bishops, and sharing quite passionately with them on what is coming to Kenya and the mission of the Lord, the agenda of the Lord at this hour, the visitation that's ongoing, and celebrating what is going on even in the nation of Kenya and in the house of the Lord. When I came up, then I fell asleep. The moment at which I was falling asleep like this, then like lightning, that I saw lightning coming from the earth, and going all up across the sky, across the clouds, and went up in a flash. It went like that. Like the lightning that normally goes across the sky. 
And then the voice said, the rapture of the church. And I jumped up, and I have come to you today. So, beloved people, prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. I have seen the coming of the Messiah. I've seen that that event happens so fast, you don't have time to repent. The time to repent is now. And so I want to lead many and everybody to the Lord now, across the earth, in your millions right now, that when that event does take place, whether you have been a Christian over time and you have fled, but this is the hour to renew and be right with God. Maybe you have been a Christian, you thought you were right, but backsliding is coming today in many forms, the lasting of the eyes, what your ears hear by association and all that. So those who want to receive the Lord, repeat this, say, Dear Jesus, you are mighty, mighty, the mighty Savior sent by God to come and die for me on the cross and redeem me from sin. So precious Jesus, I repent tonight and receive you in my life as my Lord and my Savior. And ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of all my sin. And ask you, mighty Lord Jesus, to establish your holy word in my life, in my heart, and in my being. Precious Lord Jesus, I ask you to send me your Holy Spirit to seal me for eternity and resolve me to build a resolve in my heart for righteousness and holiness. Precious Lord Jesus, I thank you for the wonderful work you did on the cross at Calvary that I may get this opportunity to receive you in my life and to be right with God Almighty Jehovah Yahweh, our Holy Father in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, today I am born again. Again, precious people, if you say that prayer, you need to be baptized and be right. It is proper to do so, so that you fulfill all righteousness. But again, this is what the Lord has spoken today. I was falling asleep, and then he showed me like lightning, the rapture takes place across the sky from the earth down all the way, cutting across the sky. And then the voice of God the Father said, the rapture of the church. May the Lord bless those who are here. Tudah, 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 tudah.